I just, <laughs> I ran from the water up a steep hill, climbed some rocks, got up here to show you how cute this is. This little like rock formation. And there's like little caves in there, but you can't really go in them. Like they're too, I'll show you, they're too narrow. Yeah, see, so it's like too narrow. I mean, you can climb in, but there's no point. And then there's this drop to the edge. So for somebody that's afraid of heights, I'm really pushing the limit here. And I, oh, thank God, I thought I broke my nail. I know, don't give me shit about that. I just got them done. They're expensive. God. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. The ledge is like right there. See, I really don't feel like this is safe anymore. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go back and go down on the bottom because like I feel like I'm gonna die. I, I probably will die. How the fuck do I get down there now? Damn it. By the way, for anybody that knows me, they know that I laugh when I'm uncomfortable. So like, I'm very fucking uncomfortable right now. How do I get down? Okay, so first of all, I want a round of applause because I'm not dead. <laughs> and honestly, like that was the most terrifying thing that I have done in a long time because I literally am scared of heights, my worst one of my worst fears is falling and like dying. Um, so I conquered that one right now. And this is why it's important to put yourself in uncomfortable situations where you have to face your fears and where you have to step outside of, out of that like little bubble that you've made yourself. So I'm gonna show you. Okay. If you can see, I was up there. You probably can't see. I was up there and I had to climb down that little hill. And then this is the worst part. This shit is literally like straight up. I mean, these were kind of like steps, so it's like whatever, I just like dragged my butt across the ground. <laughs> but like coming down this, there's nowhere to really like step. And I was like grabbing onto roots because you always grab onto like roots or like little divots in the rocks or whatever you can like pretty much grab. So I did that, I went really, really slow. I put the GoPro away because I needed to concentrate and I'm alive. And I came down here and I recognized something Okay. Okay, this is <laughs> this is worse than I thought. Okay, so this is what I'm looking at right now. So I noticed this, and for anybody that doesn't know, that's part of a skull, okay? There's a skull, there's a bone. There's a bone, okay? Does anybody know where this is leading to? Oh, wait, hold on, there's more. There's bones, there's a skull, part of a skull back there. This is creepy as fuck. Okay, so then I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, right? Scanning the ground, oh, ding, ding, ding. There it is. I don't know what it is. I kind of want to take it home because I'm weird like that. But like, look at this. Like, what was this? And I kind of want to touch it, but I don't because I don't know what it is, but here, let's. What the fuck is it? That is so weird. Those are teeth, guys. Those are teeth right there. Like I could. Oh, that is so gross. I could take this home and like clean it up. I have skulls. It's weird. I don't have human skulls. I have a cow skull from the farm, but okay, let's just look. That's big teeth. That, whatever that is, got fucking murdered and like just ripped apart. Okay, see, I don't know if you can see. That piece is part of a skull. That is a bone of some sort from the back or something. I don't know, I don't see anything else. 
That is so cool. Where'd my rock go that I was poking it with? This, I think. Like, look at that. Sorry, there's a glare. And look at that. That is so weird. That's the jaw. What is it? Like, what has teeth like that? And then whatever that piece is, this is part of, this is part of the skull too. Whatever this was, that's obviously part of the skull. Huh. So maybe, maybe something like fell off the edge. Maybe they were trying to come down where I came down and completely fell off the edge and died here. And then I guess just decomposed. Cause that's weird. Like. There's the weirdest thing too is that there's no actual like sight of any animal behavior down here. Like there's no feces or anything besides the ducks. And that's Yeah, that's literally the only bones that I I see. I don't know. I'm gonna Google it. I'm gonna Google it when I get home. Okay, guys, I, I don't know what to do. My heart is racing. I literally, I'm walking out. I don't know if I noticed this before. I, I obviously didn't notice this before. What am I saying? Um, so I'm walking out and I step over a puddle. And this puddle was a little bit darker than the normal puddles, if that makes sense. And I look down and I'm like, wait, that looks like something fuzzy. So I'm looking and I notice this, okay? it's alive and it's twitching the other one's sleeping I don't know what to do do I call the Humane Society because there's two of them there's only two of them like and I don't know if maybe like that was the other whatever this is like a fox I think it's a fox or a coyote or something I don't even know it looks like a little raccoon, but it's not a raccoon, I don't think. And I really want to like just pick the one up out of the puddle because I don't want it to like lay in a puddle. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Because <laughs> there's no more. Like I don't see, I don't see any more on the ground besides these two. And I don't want to just leave because that's so mean. I mean, I guess I'll check to see if I have service or something. So this vlog is gonna be a little bit longer than I thought and I'm probably gonna cut out a lot of the footage that I filmed walking because I feel like this one is just, like what's happening now is probably a lot more eventful than I thought it would be on like a Monday off. <laughs> so these little furry things that I didn't really know what they are, it's really clear what they are now. And I called um, animal services or animal control or whatever it is. Um, and they don't deal with this area, so I had to call the, the Guelph Humane Society because that's what covers this general region. And um, it's really obvious now what they are. So, here. So, I don't know. Oh, I just smeared it. You can see this little guy. You can see the markings on his face. So, this is a baby raccoon. And this little guy who I pulled out of the puddle, he was laying in this puddle when I found him. And I, I, I talked to the people at the animal control. I was like, I just want to get him out of the puddle. 
and they said like if you're gonna do that then use like the longest stick you can find because even though they're like so young they're not gonna like come and charge at you because they're not very fast but if they bite you or scratch you or anything and they have rabies then you're screwed so he said to use like the longest stick that you can find and just kind of push him out of the puddle so that's what i did so now he's laying outside the puddle at least so he's not like face in it but man today is just <laughs> I don't even think I'm gonna make my doctor's appointment, honestly, because I'd rather stay here and make sure these guys are okay and stuff. And it's honestly like, if I if I hadn't gone back, because I started walking and I didn't realize, and then I went back to take a picture of the, the skull on my Snapchat, because I wanted to put it on Snapchat. So I went back to the spot and then I walked back this way and, and this is when I noticed them. So if I hadn't gone back to take a Snapchat, I wouldn't even have noticed these babies and who would have known what happened? Like, there's like, birds of prey that are around here that could come and swoop them up ew there's other animals and stuff that could come and eat them and like i just i don't know it doesn't feel right leaving but i'm gonna go up <sighs> fuck off you stupid black flies i'm gonna go back up and fill my water bottle and then come back down so my mate said he's on his way i had to go to shoppers or something because i thought i had a jug of water in my car but i didn't so i bought some and i bought a popsicle but they're on their way and then i have to walk them back down in um I told some people as I was coming out to not go near them or like just like watch out when they step. So hopefully they do that. But oh my god, my pop school's dripping. I gotta go. So how old do you think they are then? Uh they're about like four to six weeks. Oh that's it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, this is the one that I don't think will make it even if he had a chance. So what is that thing called again that you th think it is? The twitching? Okay. It's distemper. Oh. Um, I'm just sitting in my car now. I'm dying of heat. Um, I just finished talking to the uh, the Humane Society girls, so she came down with me, um, brought the little carry thing to carry them back out, and she said they had whatever that disease was that you saw that she said. The one for sure has it, and she said if, the, if that one has it and it's so bad, then chances are the other one has it, which means that mom probably had it, um, and that's maybe why they were abandoned, or she got hit by a car or something, and then they were abandoned, went looking for her. Um, so there's a million reasons why they would be out there so young um, she said they're about six weeks give or take they look like they'd be about six weeks old um, and they would technically still be nursing off the mom um, so they would nurse they would she said they would nurse until they're about twice the size that they are now and then they would stay with the mom for about a year to learn how to be a raccoon is what she said um, and uh, and then be on their way. So even if they were to go to a rehabilitation center right now, um, then they would stay there for a year, uh, get rehabilitated, get checked out and all that stuff. Um, but she said that they called yesterday and there's no spots left at any centers right now for raccoons. Um, it's different with squirrels. Apparently she said that squirrels uh, have a faster turnover. Like they have multiple litters a year, whereas raccoons have one. So the ones that they do bring in, they'd have to be for a year. And uh, she said with that one for sure being sick and twitching, that's not a good sign. And she's taking them to vet right now to get them looked at. Um, so they're gonna get looked at and checked for rabies. And then uh, someone's gonna call me about if they have rabies or not. And if they do, then they just wanna make sure that I wasn't like bitten or scratched or I didn't have any like actual contact with them. Um, and uh, the saddest part is that she said they're probably gonna be euthanized because there's no room for them to rehabilitate them and they're sick and it's something, it's not a sickness that's as bad as rabies. Like if they had rabies, then they're gonna get put down right away. But the thing that they do have, it's not as bad as rabies, but it's still something that will mess them up um, neurologically and mentally. Like it's, it's still not something good to have. So they're gonna get euthanized most likely, um, which is always a sad outcome. I mean, anything getting euthanized is a sad outcome, dogs or cats or birds or whatever. But in all realness, like I would rather them 
be looked at and at least like confirm that they're like sick or whatever and they have to be put down and then they'd be put down rather than them just sitting out there and me not doing anything about it or us not picking them up or anything and just leaving them there um, for some other animal to come and find and eat or uh, like a bird to come and eat them or they cook in the sun because they were sitting in the sun or the water washes up and they would drown like it's just I would rather them be put down really pretty much instantly than um, sit there and suffer more because they're so little they're so 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 little and it's heartbreaking but it's life unfortunately that is just how things go um, anyways it's like 1 30 I'm dying of heat uh, I'm probably gonna go home sit in the air conditioning for a little bit um, and then go to my doctor's appointment so I'm gonna end this vlog here anyways um, check out my other videos if you like this one but in the meantime, stay cool and enjoy the sun in the summer, okay? Okay, one more thing before I forget. I showed her the animal skull that I found because she works at the Indian Society, she's probably seen them before. And she said that she's really into like wildlife and all that stuff. Like she's more into it than just like normal people at the Humane Society. Um, so she suspected that it wasn't a fox or, or a coyote or anything like that, but it was actually a deer. So she said that she thinks that it could have been a deer because the teeth, the two teeth that were left weren't sharp enough to be um, uh, carnivore teeth. She said that they're a little flatter. They're a little bit rotted out because it's been there like probably since last year. But she said that um, it looks like it would have been like a deer with the, uh, with the flatter, flatter teeth. Um, how a deer got down there, we don't know. Um, she said that the pile of bones, because there's like like pile right um she said that the pile of bones could have been from a fox or a coyote pile like a stash where they would like kind of bring all their stuff and collect it or whatever or it could have just been literally a deer that like fell off the edge and died there so um she suspects it's a deer head but i just figured i'd tell you that before i forget and then edit this and be like oh it's still carnivore teeth it's not it's definitely probably a deer um, anyways, now I'm going to go. So again, stay cool, enjoy the summer, get your tan on, and I'll see you guys in the next like little adventure thing that I do. Okay. See ya. Mm -hmm.